I'll turn the time over to Melody. Take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I am Melody from Melody in the Making on Instagram and my newly launched Melody in the Making blog. Um, I'm really excited to be working with Michael again on this DIY craft. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of time um, for everyone to join and kind of get situated. So um, while everyone is doing that, I thought I'd introduce myself again. If you are seeing me for the first time or hearing about me for the first time, I'm Melody and I live in Southern California with my husband and our two kids. Um, I was a teacher for a while for elementary school until I became a stay-at-home mom. And I've just been kind of crafting, doing DIY stuff. I've always been kind of an artsy person. Um, and then I kind of got involved in the whole Instagram thing. So um, I'm pretty excited about it. I've always loved sharing all my crafts. So um, it's exciting that I'm able to kind of do this with you all today. Um, I'm hoping that everyone is getting their Christmas shopping done. I know that shipping is a little bit crazy this year, but um, Michael's has so many great, great things right now currently in the store for you to get all your holiday shopping needs met. Um, from decorations to, you know, buying gifts for people. Um, so this is one idea that you can do for a DIY gift. I personally love doing DIY gifts. Um, back when I was in fifth grade, I remember my teacher had us make this beautiful Mother's Day book and it was all crafted um, by hand each and every single page. And I feel like that was the moment that kind of sparked my creativity and um, doing like DIY gifts because just giving that to my mom, it just was so, so special. So DIY gifts are definitely the way to go for me. Um, I hope everyone is kind of situated. Do we have, should I keep going or get started? I think you can go ahead and get started with the project. Okay, perfect. So today we're gonna to be doing a uh, candles two ways. So the first way um, is going to be this dip dye candle. And I ran across this technique and I thought it was just so cool. I wanted to replicate it using different colors. And basically you're taking a plain taper candle and we're going to be dyeing some soy wax flakes to hand dip them. And this you can get so creative with. There's so many different color combinations um, and different things you can do with this. And then the second um, candle that we're going to be making today is one using a napkin. So you're probably like, why, is, uh, why are we using a napkin? Um, but napkins are actually pretty awesome for crafting. I've done Mod Podge projects with napkins. Um, there's a lot of different uses that you can do. And I'm actually like a self-proclaimed napkin collector. Um, whenever I'm in a store, I'm like, if I see a cute napkin, I'm taking it because I just can't get enough of them. But this one, we're going to be taking some napkins that I found at Michael's. Um, these ones are the holiday napkins that are available. And we're going to be basically imprinting them into um, the wax of the candle. So that way it has some text. And we also are going to be doing, if we have time, um, one with a pattern on it. So this has like a little bit of gold shimmer on it. So that's going to end up looking really cool. So those are our two ways. Before we get started, we do want to set up our um, kind of wax station right now because that does take a little bit of time. So I will be going back and forth between the two different types of candles because the dipping does take some drying time. So while that's drying, I'm going to be hopping over and doing the napkin candles. So first off, we want to start with um, some glass containers. So these glass containers, you have, you can find them basically anywhere. These ones are actually upcycled. I found glass containers at Michael's. You can source them pretty much however you want. Um, with these though, you wanna be sure to choose smaller and narrow ones because the fact that you're dipping the candle in it, you want it to be able to go up higher. So if you choose a wider vessel, it's not gonna go up as high. So you want to do something that's a little bit small and a little bit narrow. Um, so let me see. We're going to be using the Simple Serenity Wax Soy Flakes that are available at Michael's. And I'm basically going to be filling this um, pretty close to the top, just like spinach. The wax flakes are going to kind of um, shrink down <laughs> once they're melted. So I'm going to go ahead and start filling that to the top. Just have like a little wooden scoop in here. And then as for your water, so we're going to be putting these into a water bath. So I actually have um, a pot here and you want to bring the water up to like a rolling boil and then keep it at a simmer, like a very low simmer, just enough to keep 
this wax um, melted throughout the whole process. So the amount of water you want to put in, um, you're going to want it to come up maybe two thirds of the way of your smallest glass container. Um, that way, the whole, the, all the wax in there gets melted. And that way, it also doesn't spill over because you don't want to put too much water in there as well. And because these are glass, they're going to sink right to the bottom, but you also don't want to put too much water where um, your glass containers are going to start to float because then that would just end up being a pretty big mess. Okay, so I filled mine up right about here. You can always add more um, if this kind of shrinks down lower than you wanted. So we're going to put this in our hot water bath and we're going to let that melt. I'm going to turn this burner up just a little bit. And if you're at home, you're going to be doing this on your stovetop. But um, for today, I'm going to be using this kind of portable burner. And um, once these gets hot, you're going to want to use tongs to move them around. So these tongs are um, silicone uh, tipped, so that way it protects the glass and you're able to move them around um, the bath really easily. So while those, or while our wax is melting, you can see that I already started um, melting a few other colors, but I'm gonna make one with you guys now. We're gonna be adding this dye in just a little bit. Um, and this is the Simple Serenity liquid dye, and it's made specifically for um, candle making. So you wanna pick this up. This is at Michael's. They have a bunch of different colors. Um, I'll be making the purple one with you guys. And there's also green, blue, red, um, just a bunch. So we're gonna be waiting for our wax to melt down a little bit. I'm turning my burner up a little bit higher so that way it can get done faster. And then while I'm waiting for that to melt, we're gonna hop on over and do our very first napkin candle. So for the napkin candles, what you're gonna need is a taper candle. And you can actually do this with different size candles, but today we're gonna be using taper candles. And the heating tool I'm going to be using is by Sizzix. And Sizzix, um, they make amazing crafting tools. This one specifically, a uh, heat tool has two different heat settings. We're going to be using it on the first heat setting just to be safe because we don't want our candle to melt too fast. Um, and then there's also a little stand that it comes with. So when I set it down, it won't roll around. And this tool is actually used typically for like embossing. You can use it for embossing powders or for shrink wrapping. So if you are shrink wrapping any gift baskets this holiday season, this is definitely a tool that you want to pick up. So you're going to need your heat tool, your candle, and then, like I said before, our holiday napkins. This one specifically, um, I loved it because there are just so many cute little fun things. The font is super fun. There's like merry and bright, which I did on my example candle, merry and bright. And then we're gonna be um, cutting this out in a second. And then you're gonna need scissors. And the last thing you're gonna need is wax paper. So this is just regular everyday wax paper that you find at the grocery store. Um, so you'll need a little bit of that. So when you are working with your napkin, so it's a brand new napkin, you're going to want to separate. So first, unfold it out. I don't know if you can flip it <laughs> to the other camera. Um, and you're going to want to separate out the layers. So if this napkin has any layers, you're going to want to make it as thin as possible. So this might take a second. My water is boiling, so I'm going to lower that a little bit. So let's get this layer off. It can be a little bit tricky. See if I can get it. So like I said, I've worked with napkins before in crafting. Um, there's just so many fun designs that you can do. So see, I'm separating the layers of my napkin very carefully. And you're going to want just uh, the layer with your pattern or your words on it. So for this candle, I thought it would be cute to do um, a tis the season. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to carefully just cut that part out. So that's the part that I want to transfer onto my candle. Doesn't have to be super perfect because once it melts into the candle, you're not going to really be able to tell um, where the lines are or anything like that. 
I'm gonna set this aside in case I wanna do another one using the same napkin. Okay, so essentially we're gonna grab our blank handle here and we're gonna place it. So typically when you put a um, candle into a candle holder, it comes up maybe like an inch, inch and a half. So you're gonna wanna place it maybe an inch, inch and a half from the bottom of the candle. That way when you put it into a candle holder, your design is not covered up. So we're gonna kind of place where we want it. So I'm gonna do it the inch, inch and a half right there. And then you actually see a little piece that I did not get. So I'm gonna put that up because I don't want it in there. there okay, so I'm gonna place my candle and now we're gonna cut our wax paper. So for our wax paper, you're gonna want enough to wrap around your candle and to be able to hold it in the back. So by holding it in the back, I mean, we're going to be wrapping it all the way around the candle and enough to hold it taut in the back. And the reason why we want it, we hold it tight and taut in the back is because we're pressing it into our melted wax candle. So you want to cut enough just to hold it like that in the back. I'm going to go ahead and cut my wax paper. So I bring it out here. It's always better to have more than um, not enough because you can always cut some off, right? If you have too much. That off. I'm gonna set my wax paper aside. Okay, so now is the really fun part. And what I love about these candles is that they come together so easily and so quickly. There's literally like three steps to it. So you can knock these out as a quick hostess gift um, if you have all the materials and it just comes together really easily. So I'm gonna position my candle and my little stain here. I'm gonna put the wax paper over it. Melody, we have a question from the chat. Yes, go ahead. Um, you said you're using wax paper. Is it all right to use parchment paper for this process? Um, I found wax paper lifts off a little bit easier. Um, parchment paper I have not tried yet, so I, I'm hesitant to recommend it because I have not tried it personally. Um, you can try it. The good thing about this craft is you can, it's an inexpensive craft and you can go ahead and try it. If it doesn't work out, you're not losing out um, on a whole lot. So, I mean, you can give it a try. <laughs> I just haven't tried it personally. Okay, so the wax paper lifts off really easily. That's why I like using the wax paper versus parchment. I'm not sure how parchment reacts to it. So I'm not gonna recommend it at this time. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, I'm holding my design onto my candle using my wax paper and I'm gonna be holding it tight. This um, heat tool now, again, I'm gonna be using it on the first setting. If I want it to melt a little bit quicker, I can switch it to the second setting. Um, but basically what we're gonna be doing, and I'm gonna talk before it kind of gets a little bit loud, is we're going to be heating up the candle, not too closely, so if you can kind of see that angle, um, uh, to the candle. So I'm gonna hold it to the candle and we're just gonna be heating it through. And you're gonna start to um, see and feel the candle melt a little bit and it's gonna get really glossy. Okay, so the outside of the wax is gonna get nice and shiny um, and you're just gonna continue to heat it up until it starts kind of dissolving into the candle. And you're gonna start, um, seeing like the edges are gonna go away because it's gonna be melting into the candle. So let me start showing you how to do that. I don't know, can you hear me if I talk over it? Yes, we can hear you and we cannot hear the heat gun. So I think you're good to talk over it. So you want to be careful too when you're holding it um, and putting on the heat gun because it is really hot. It can get really hot and you don't want to burn your fingers. So if you have like a heat protectant um, glove, like the ones that you use for um, like hair ironing tools, I actually have one upstairs. Um, you can go ahead and use that. It's not 100% necessary. I've done it before without using heat protectant gloves. You just have to be very, very careful so you don't burn yourself. Thank you. 
point, as you can see, it's starting to get really shiny. The edges of, is this close enough? <laughs> the edges of my napkin have disappeared. Um, so we basically want to continue that all the way up until all those edges kind of disappear and you can start seeing it um, get pressed into the napkin. And again, you want to hold it tight so that way it is getting pressed into the napkin or into the candle, excuse me. So you might want to kind of reposition once you start getting to the other side. I'm going to actually kind of move my hand so I don't burn myself. So you can see that it's starting to disappear. I'm going to take a little peek on one side. I want to make sure that it has transferred completely. If not, you can always, oops, you can always continue to heat it up. So I'm going to finish this side and then we're going to pull it off really slowly. Okay, so when you turn the heat gun off, you want to kind of pull it taut and let it cool just a little bit before you start removing your wax paper. You want to make sure it's all pressed in there. Give it a few seconds to um, cool down. You can see that the candle is actually really warm. <laughs> And when you're doing this, um, you want to make sure too that you're not putting the heat gun too close or like right onto the candle because you don't want the candle to warp it in any way or create any um, funky shapes. I'm watching my wax over here. Okay, so we're going to pull this off slowly. And it comes off so easily. There you go. So now we have our very own Tis the Season candle. Um, and this one is basically all done. So <laughs> that was really, really easy. We're going to do the pattern one in a few minutes. Um, that one is a little bit trickier because you have to wrap the entire candle if you're doing the pattern. For this one, since it's just the words, it was just a small little piece. But again, it's pretty seamless, pretty easy, and it makes such a cute little gift. Okay. So while I'm putting this to the side, we're going to check on our wax over here and our wax is actually fully melted. So we're gonna go ahead and dye our wax. So again, I am using the Simple Serenity um, wax dye. So it's liquid dye that's made specifically for candles and you can pick this up at Michael's. And it comes in a little um, glass vial like this, as well as comes with a little dropper. Now for um, coloring our uh, different waxes, it really depends um, on the color. So for shades like red and purple, I didn't have to use that many drops. Um, I would say the baseline for drops for if you want to achieve like a bright bold color like this was about 20. So you want to start at 20 
And then um, the yellow one was a little bit more, I want to say it was about 40 drops for that one to get yellow. And even then it, you know, wasn't as pigmented, but that's fine. Um, you just kind of have to be mindful and you can play around with it. So this is where you can also get creative is you can do lighter tones, um, different shades. You can mix colors um, if you're into color mixing. But right now we're going to use our purple or we're going to make our purple. Excuse me. So I'm going to put on some gloves because I do not want to walk around with some purple hands. So I'm going to put this on first. Okay, so this guy, let me grab my tongs. I don't know if you can do the overhead on this. Um, again, you want to keep the water bath warm so that way it keeps your wax melted the entire time. I'm going to open up my vial dye and then I'm going to put in about 20 um, drops. More. Okay. So if you want a couple extra, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna tap this. And another little crafting tip for you guys is when you are doing any sorts of crafts, craft paper, like this typical brown craft paper, is awesome to have on hand. Um, it just makes for easier cleanup, protects your surfaces. Um, and yeah, especially if you're dyeing things. Okay, so we have our craft die right here. And I actually will be grabbing a spoon really quick so I can mix that up. So give me one little second. Okay, I'm in my kitchen now, so I grabbed a straw. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of mix that up with my little straw. Don't worry, it will not be harmed. <laughs> Okay, I mix that dye up, dump this in the sink. Okay, so we have our purple dye ready to go. I'm gonna move over my um, heating tool and we're gonna go ahead and dip dye. So now that our dye is all set to go, our wax dyes are all set to go, um, I went ahead and created the rest of the dyes. Um, again, if you're doing this at home, you're going to want to kind of just play around with how many drops that you put in for the reds and the blues and the purple, the darker colors. Um, you're going to use a, a less drops, basically. Um, for the lighter colors, you're going to use more just so it shows up a little bit more pigmented. Okay, sorry, am I talking too fast? I want to make sure you guys are keeping up. Um, if this is something that you're doing and just watching right now, make sure you have like some notepad paper and a pencil so you can jot down some notes and you can also um, feel free to reach out to me at Melody in the Making on Instagram if you ever have questions about this craft or crafts in general I'm always open um, and also this will be recorded so if you are watching this right now and you know you miss a step or you want to go back and do it um, you can also watch the recorded version that's going to be available in just a few days on um, Michael's YouTube and social channels okay so we have um, our candle here. We're going to go ahead and dip dye it. Move this kind of out of the way. So for the ones that I made, you're going to notice that if I use a lighter color, it's going to be on the bottom. So I like to call that my base color. So um, for this base color, I used yellow. For this base color, it was kind of the purple color. Um, so you're going to want that on the bottom because if you try to do a lighter color like yellow on the top, then it's going to it's not going to show up right you're not going to really see it. So uh, since we're doing purple first that's fine, we can do that as our base color. And then you're going to want um, some sort of container to rest your candle on when it is drying so. Ooh. There we go. So for this one, I'm just using one of my other glass containers and then I'll probably go ahead and use this glass container to dry the other one. So we're going to make two today, um, just so you guys can get a hang of the technique. Okay, so we're going to start with the bottom. Um, for these, we're going to want it to come up higher. So because my glass jars are a little bit short, um, I'm basically going to dip it and then use my tongs to tilt it. So we're going to tilt 
our glass jar just so it um, comes up a little bit higher on my candle. Um, another thing you can do is just add more wax um, and more dye. Uh, but I'm going to be tilting it today because ours is about halfway full. Okay, so um, the other thing before I actually get started is that you don't want to hold your candle into the wax. You want to dip it and bring it out. And then to get more pigmented, we're going to let it dry for a few seconds and we're going to dip it again. And you're going to kind of see the technique um, where I am, I'm going to start to roll it. So let me go ahead and just get started. <laughs> okay, so we're going to dip it first. So I kind of just want a little base layer. It goes in and out of that bath, right? So you can kind of see that it was pretty short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and we're going to tilt it just a little bit. So it's going to go in. I'm going to twirl my candle around and then I'm going to let it kind of dry. And then just so the um, wax kind of coats it evenly on the bottom, you're going to want to turn it. So if it's dripping, you're going to keep it at an angle. I'm going to say like a 45 degree angle, and you're just going to turn it. So that way it is um, evenly coating the bottom of your candle. So you can kind of see that it's pretty much dry. I'm um, going to let that kind of cool off. And then we're going to dip it again for a little bit of a stronger um, pigment. So again, I'm going to grab my tongs and tilt it over. Dip it again. And you want to move really, really, really quickly because you don't want that first layer to just remelt. It's kind of going to undo all of your work <laughs> if you do that. So you really want to work quickly when you're working with um, the wax. Okay, so I'm just turning it, making sure that it is kind of at an angle and it's coating evenly. Melody, we had a couple of questions from the chat. Yes, go ahead. So the first one we have is, does the color lighten or darken when it gets solid? And from what I can see, it looks like as they're melted, they're much darker than what they appear on the candle as. Yes, definitely. So they do um, lighten up. So that's why I started with a base 20. Uh, 20 drops, I mean, um, because they do lighten up quite a bit get them into your candle, um, into your candle wax. So yes, they do lighten up. And the second question was, is it colored wax in each container or is it candle dyes? So it is the um, soy wax flakes. And what I did was I melted them down um, and then I added the colored wax dye to them. To answer it. <laughs> Yes, so it, you're adding more wax to it. It's just a colored wax layer over a white candle. Exactly, yes. So I'm just basically, um, yeah, I'm just adding a wax layer of color to dip dye the candles. And one do. more question, would food coloring work for this project? Food coloring, I have never tried um, food coloring because I just don't know how it's gonna react with um, the wax, if it's gonna, you know, melt together. Like when you're cooking and you have butter and a liquid and it breaks, I was afraid of that happening. So that's why I used um, the dye that's specifically made for candle making, um, just a little thought. <laughs> but again, if you wanna try it, I mean, feel free, let me know how it goes. Cause that would be awesome if it did work. They'd have like tons of different color options. I'm going to do another layer. So a little bit darker. And let that drip a little bit. And then I'm just going to turn, turn, turn. Okay. So I'm going to let this first layer dry. And then um, we're going to hop on over and make our other candle. Okay, we're going to start our second dip dye candle. So for this one, um, we're going to start with a yellow base layer. So again, I'm going to start with the bottom of my candle. The cool thing about this craft too is you can just do the bottom or you can do both sides like I did in the original craft or you can do just the top. Um, there's lots of possibilities with this. So for these ones, um, I'm going to do the bottom just to show you guys and it's the exact same um, for the top. So for the yellow base color, I actually use a different kind of glass vessel because I wanted it to go up higher. 
Um, but I'm basically going to use the same technique. So I'm going to tilt it and dip my candle in. Again, for the yellow, it's not as pigmented. Um, so you're going to do a couple of layers if you want it super pigmented. If you want it a little bit more subtle, you know, one, two, three layers is perfect. Um, but I love color. So <laughs> I'm going to do a few more. And that actually dried really quickly. Um, depending on your climate right now, in California, it's pretty warm. Um, but my house, I try to keep it <laughs> around 70, 72. So that's why they're drying pretty quickly. If you are in warmer climates, it might take a little bit longer. Okay, so that layer is pretty dry. I'm gonna go ahead and dip it again. Remember for your second layer of um, dyed wax, you wanna move super quick. You don't want the first layer to melt off. There we go. So I just kept it in literally like three seconds. I'm gonna rotate. I know, let's see. Is that color showing up on camera? Yep, we can see it. Looks great. Perfect. And let that dry a little bit more. And then what you can also do is um, when one candle is drying, you can go ahead and hop back onto your second candle or your other candle. So I'm going to start dyeing the purple one. I'm going to add a layer of blue to the bottom. So again, just the you know note about layers, you just want to work quickly. Let me move this for you guys so you can see it. And then I'm going to, I don't need to tilt for this one because I don't want it to come up um, higher than the purple because it, it's, it'll just cover it. So you want it to come up just a little bit. In and out, let it drip. And then you just kind of kind of rotate. You can shake off a little bit of the excess um, if, it start, if it's dripping quite a bit. Um, but for the most part, if you rotate it, it'll just coat the bottom um, pretty evenly. That's kind of drying. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, here we go. Okay, and then do that again. Just a second or two in the wax. Shake that off. No, can you stay there? Okay. okay, so you can already see kind of um, the two different tones. This one is cool because it is the same color family. So um, I always think that looks really pretty when you use different tones of the same color family. And then this yellow one's done. So we're going to go ahead and add a green layer to this because I think the yellow is looking pretty good. I'm going to grab my tongs. So this DIY gift, again, it comes together pretty easily. Um, the first candle, the napkin candle, comes together so quickly. And then this one, you can kind of set aside some time for an afternoon of crafting. Um, if you are doing this with older children, I would suggest making sure that you know they're aware of um, like the how hot this pan can get and everything just because um, I don't want them to get hurt. Okay so there's one layer of green on here we're going to dip it again really quickly and not and then with each dip you can kind of see it getting darker. So I'm gonna move that and rotate 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 Another thing I love about this DIY is you can make this for any type of occasion, really. Like you can gift it for a birthday present, you can gift it for Mother's Day, you can gift it for um, like a hostess gift if you're attending a dinner party. So super versatile. And taper candles right now are really trending, so I thought it would make such a cute gift. So there's our green. I might dip it one more time to get a little bit more pigment. How is that looking? Can you see that? Okay, let's do one last one. I'm gonna try that off a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry. I hope you can see, are you able to see that? Yes, the colors are showing up great on camera. Awesome, okay. 
Okay, so moving on, we're going to switch over to our um, second napkin candle um, because I'm going to let these dry off a little bit and then um, I think if we, if we have time, we can do the tops. So let me grab our next napkin. This napkin is going to be um, a pattern napkin. So I grabbed this one again at Michael's and it has kind of like a, a sheen to it, like a little gold. Um, what do you call that? Like a gilding, I guess it's gilded. <laughs> so you can use that and it actually shows up in the candle. So it'll be um, just as shiny on a candle. So we're gonna grab this. For since it is a pattern, you're gonna want it to wrap around. Let's take my gloves off for a second. Um, you're gonna want to have it wrap around all the way. So with our first one, we only cut off a little portion. For this one, um, you're actually gonna wrap your whole candle. So first step is to Spread your napkin out, take off that second layer. Be a little careful about that. Take off our second layer. Side. Okay, and then again, you're gonna want to leave about an inch, inch and a half um, on the bottom because when you put it into a candle holder, it is gonna kind of cover that section. So you don't want the pattern going there because no one's gonna see it. So um, I'm kind of gonna eyeball that. To be right around here. Melody, we had a good question about this yes. style of candle earlier. They were mm -hmm. asking about how the candle burns. Whenever it gets down to the point where the napkin has been added, does it change or melt in a different way? So it actually um, will start to melt. And if you start seeing it kind of, um, because it is paper, um, essentially, it won't burn off because it's part of the wax if that makes any sense so you might see if you do get down to the candle um you might see it clump a little bit but it's not super noticeable because this is so thin um and then if you do see it you can always use you know scissors or a wick trimmer to kind of just trim off any excess parts all right so let me cut this really quick off so i can measure it to my candle Yeah, there's something about gold and the holidays that I just love that extra little twinkle. Okay. So again, we want the pattern to go all the way around our candle. So I'm kind of gonna eyeball this Let's see. where I need it to cut. If I put it down, maybe give it a little fold. I don't know where to cut it. Put it right there where I folded it. Again, the lines don't exactly have to be perfect because it just melts into the candle. All right, so we have our piece. I'm gonna actually use um, the same wax paper as before um, and it doesn't affect it at all. So we're gonna place this around. This is a little bit trickier because you have to keep it in place um, so the napkin doesn't bunch up on you. So you want to make sure that when you're putting it on, you are wrapping it pretty tightly or as tight as you can. And then you're going to put the wax can or the wax paper, excuse me, over the top of it. So move that up just a little bit. Okay. So we have our wax paper. We're basically going to hold it in place. And we are ready to use our heat tool. So again, I'm going to grab our little Sizzix heat tool here, and we're going to just do the exact same thing. We're going to sweep it over um, section by section, and you're going to watch it kind of get shiny and start to melt. And then in a few seconds, you'll be able to pull off um, the wax paper. You can notice that I'm like starting to lose my grip on the wax paper. So I want to make sure that it is tight. So that way it is pressing into our candle here. There we go. Okay. 
Melody, have you ever experimented with using rubber bands or a clamp or anything to hold that wax paper in place while you use the heat gun? That's a good question. I have not. Um, I actually, that's a really good idea. I should probably try that. Um, but what I like about using um, just my hand to hold it is that I can adjust it really easily. Um, and you kind of want it to roll like that. So it's kind of hard to do if it's already clamped on there. Um, but I mean, give it a try. Let me know how that goes. It might be a way better technique. Turn this guy up just a little bit. If you are using that second heat setting, um, make sure you hold it a little bit farther away so that way your candle doesn't melt too quickly. To press it Rolling it. Pressing in. This is a little bit trickier because you are doing the entirety of the candle um, like all the way around. So you kind of have to rotate it as you're going. And as you're going to, it's okay to kind of move the wax paper around. So you can see it's kind of adhering um, on one side. So I'm going to continue to kind of melt that over. Um, so one side was pretty much done. And then now we kind of want to move on to the next side. So you can adjust the wax paper and just continue to heat it up. So crafting during the holidays, one of my favorite, favorite things, and I'm hoping that as my kids get older, I can kind of do this with them. Is there anyone that's crafting with their older kids today? Almost finished. So I'm going to take a look at my candle. So there's a little bit that I need to still melt on either end, but then after that, I'm pretty much done. So a little bit. I think 
that's about done. I'm gonna let this cool for just a second, making sure to kind of press it in. Um, I've actually done this craft with a floral napkin and that always turns out really pretty um, if you're able to cut up the pattern kind of neatly. Let's see how this dry looks. Just a little bit. And as you're using the heat tool, you can kind of see that the candle is getting quite warm. If it's getting too warm, you're going to kind of want to pause and let it cool down. Um, you don't want the candle getting too hot to where it starts to kind of warp um, because then you're going to have a crooked candle. Okay, so here is our candle. You can see that the gold still shines through, which I think is just awesome. Um, and then, you know, you can do just a set and gift it like this. You can do it, pair it with the dip die um, and gift it that way. And then another third candle option also is you can take this um, and try to dye it. I haven't tried it personally, but that was kind of um, where I was gonna try to go next with this. If I wanted to create a different candle, maybe dip dye the top of it um, a different color. So that would look really cool. Um, and then I'm going to actually finish dipping the top of this. So we have our bottom here, we're gonna do the top. And I actually want this candle to be um, pretty, not monochrome, but kind of keep it in the same color family. So I'm gonna start with um, red as my base color at the top. And um, you are gonna be covering the top, uh, the wick with it, but that's fine because when you go to light it, you can kind of just melt it with your lighter um, and then the wick should pop right up. So we're going to use red. Let me move my wax over here. Melody, just to give you a time check, we have about 12 minutes left. Perfect, thank you. So we're actually almost done. So let's grab this. You can see that, okay. So we're gonna dip dye the top. This container is a little bit higher up, so I might not need to um, tilt it. Let's just kind of take a look and see where it hits. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt it a little bit because I do want it to come up just a tad. Tilt. And then as you can see, the red is really pigmented. So this was only um, 20 drops for the red, 20 drops of dye. I'm gonna rotate it. Honestly, crafting during Christmas is my absolute favorite. Um, crafting with my kids, crafting by myself. It, is, it just makes the holidays just a little bit more magical. Um, and these DIY gifts again, I think are just so much more special when you do a DIY gift. So I'm gonna rotate, let it drip off a little bit. Okay. And for the red, um, since it is so pigmented, I only did two layers um, and it's already showing up a lot better. So I'm gonna let this one dry, this layer dry. And then we're going to dip this side. So this side, I want to show you kind of what the blue looks like. So the blue I did in a smaller glass container. Actually, let's do green. Let's keep it holiday. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do green as the base. And then we'll do a little bit of blue on top. Um, I mean, who says blue can't be holiday, right? So we're going to do green as our base. I'm tilting it, tilting it. Again, that's not as pigmented, so we're gonna have to do a couple layers. It's funny because um, I actually like non-traditional colors for the holidays. <laughs> I absolutely love color, um, as you can probably tell on my Instagram feed. Uh, and my mother growing up, she actually would do different color schemes every year for her Christmas trees. And just that's just like one of my fondest memories is coming up with a color scheme or a theme for our Christmas tree and kind of helping her pick out the ornaments. I mean, she has tons of ornaments. Um, 
And I actually carried that on to my own family as much as my husband <laughs> doesn't like all the storage that we need. Um, but I love it. It's so, so fun. And every year I do a different tree. Um, it's not that I buy all new ornaments. I'll buy like maybe a small set of new ornaments, but I like to like use ornaments from past years and combine them with different colors. So I have all sorts of colors in my little Christmas arsenal. I don't know. Are you guys fans of um, traditional Christmas colors or do you, are we liking the color? I'm going to roll that and then I'm going to do it one more time. There we go. And I'm going to let this guy dry off. And then we're going to dip this one more time. So we have what, less than 10 minutes? Maybe? Let's do a, let's do a purple. Let's do a purple. Okay, let me grab my purple. This is the one that we made earlier. Ooh. Okay, so as you can kind of see, the purple was a little bit hard to show up on that one. So this one we're gonna need to dip a couple more times. Interesting. We have a comment from Kathleen. She says she loves all colors for Christmas. She collects ornaments from everywhere she travels and it's such a fun reminder of her experiences once the holiday season comes along. That's so fun. I actually, my sister-in-law does that. She adds like a special ornament to her tree every year. And I love that idea too. Um, it's so special to kind of look back and see like where you've been. I actually kind of wish I did that with all the different places. So if I, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but uh, I uh, am a military, well, maybe I did it. I'm a military spouse. So we have moved around quite a bit um, and lived in different places. We've gotten to live in Georgia, in Hawaii, and then of course in California. Um, so I've actually collected an ornament from each state. So we have that up on our tree every year. Okay. So our purple here is not showing up. That's okay, you guys. Kind of giving me an ombre look though, huh? Oops. Okay. So again, another reason why I like using craft paper to cover my surfaces is just because crafting can definitely get um, messy. So I'm just going to let this one kind of sit and dry for a little bit before I try another layer. Um, do we have any other questions about either the wax or the napkin handles? As those questions come in, Stephanie said this has been a great class, informative and great tips. She can do this. Nice homemade oh, gifts. Gosh. Thank you for the instruction. Love the class. Good. Thank you. I really hope you guys try this. It's really, really easy, even for beginning um, beginner crafters. Uh, you can easily do this. This heat tool from Sizzix works beautifully. Um, and you can use it for a whole bunch of other things, especially during the holidays when you are doing gift wrapping, shrink wrap, um, gift baskets, things like that is awesome for that. Um, and then let me see. I don't know if we have extra time. Um, so uh, this one is a candle that I did. This was not, it's polka dot, so it was not super um, shiny, just like this one. But you can do all sorts of things. You can have the entire candle covered in your pattern, or you can just have parts of it covered. You can also dip dye, like I said, um, parts of it and kind of combine the two, um, actually the two. But it's just a really easy DIY, DIY gifts always kind of just hit a little bit differently because they're just so special and you're putting the time and the effort and the care into it. Um, but that pretty much wraps it up for me. If you don't have any other questions, uh, again, this is going to be recorded. So make sure you go and check it out. Um, hopefully you were taking some notes. If not, uh, check out the recording in a couple of days. You can also find me on uh, Melody in the Making on Instagram and my newly launched blog, melodyinthemakingblog.com. 
Um, but that's pretty much about it for me. <laughs> if you don't have any other questions. We have one question from Nancy. She was asking if you hold the candle vertical after dipping, can you make a drip candle? Sorry, say that one more time. If you hold a candle vertical after you dipped it, does it drip down? Yes, so it would drip down um, a little bit. So if you dip it and then you let it, um, if you hold it vertically afterwards, it would drip down and it would create kind of like that drip effect if that's what you're looking for. So that would actually be a really cool idea as well. You try that, let me know and tag me so I can see it. And I think that's it for questions in the chat. Awesome. Okay. So I really hope you guys had fun doing this with me. If you were just watching, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, again, I'm Melody. Come find me, Melody in the Making. And um, thank you to Michaels for doing this and setting this up with me.